Good shaking, gang. Today, we are talking about our sanity. Mm -hmm. Now this talk is kind of all over the place, but what else is new? I'm telling you, tangents in the kitchen. That's what this ought to be called. I am making some coffee, keto style, and if you don't know what keto is all about, it's essentially low, 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 low carbs, no sugar. That's it. It's nothing crazy. It's really archaic in the thinking. I love the science. I love what your body can do. And I have been doing it since the middle of August. So that's where I'm at. Because I can't have sugar, I don't like, I mean, you don't understand my love for Italian sweet cream. If you're a Coffee Mate fan, you know, that's the best one, the best one. And I haven't had that in a really long time, but this little medley that I do is pretty close. So, in here already I have like a, I'm kind of cheating already. It's a sugar-free syrup. But sugar-free syrups still have that erythritol and all those like chemical sugars. So not like real sugar, but chemical sugar. And your body still knows it's sugar because your body's smart. But if you, like Weight Watchers, if you can factor those points in throughout your day and you're going to consider this a treat, then by all means, boo-boo, you earned it. And I did. Coach Marissa kicked my dairy air today. She did. She did. So I'm gonna do that. Heavy whipping cream. That's right, don't you dare go light. Don't you dare go fat free because that is what keto essentially is. You do keto and you intermittent fast. Those two, two things go hand in hand because when you are eating keto, you should be getting so full off of the stuff that you're eating that you can stretch out and go a lot longer to your next meal. And that is what spawned this video. I was like one of those crazy people who, I just like ate all day long. And like I was never full. That was totally driving me crazy. Never full, hungry all the time. And I work out and it was like a really crazy vicious cycle. And I was done with it. I was so done with it. I'm like 38 years old. I was done with that yo-yo. The glucose coaster <laughs> as those what is it, clean keto lifestyle girls? Ugh, they're great. So, you know, I love to cook. So it, it was crazy. Like my passion was feeding into my habit. It was, it was nuts. So I feel really like good now. I feel good. That was what it was all about. I wanted to feel good and not want to eat the house down 24 seven. So if you can relate, this video is for you. So yeah, I started doing the keto. Um, it didn't just like happen overnight either because I love pasta, I love oatmeal. I mean, who doesn't? So there was all this stuff that I had to like just quit cold turkey and that was how like week one went. I didn't try to intermittent fast, I didn't try to like be keto savvy, I just stopped eating carbs and really paid attention to the amount of time I ate all day. So that was week one. It was really hard. Week two was just as hard because that's when I started really looking into the food and the macros and like what percentage of my plate is made up of X, Y, and Z. And in this case, X, Y, and Z, you should be thinking total fats and protein and carbs. You do not want the carbs number. This is what's really hard. 20 grams for the whole day for the whole day. Now let me rewind. You know how I love my coffee mate? Can we just have a moment for Alice? The coffee mate creamer that I loved, Italian sweet cream, had in just one tablespoon, like 35 or 40, it's in the fridge. I should just go look. Let's just go look. Jeez, Louise. That's my middle name. Hmm. Okay, 
Okay, so this is the sugar-free one. So it's gonna be way better. But yeah, like something similar in this line. 35 calories in just one tablespoon. And of that, the total sugars were five grams. So I probably put four tablespoons, probably, at least. Which I think four tablespoons is a quarter of a cup. So that's your 20, that's your 20 grams of carbs right there. When you start to think about the numbers and the data, which if you're a nerd like me, you're into it. I mean, I want to know all the information. Like, tell me everything, more, more, more. If I'm on the treadmill, there's like a lot of information on my treadmill at uh, the gym I go to, Football or Fit. Like, it'll tell me my watts that I'm putting out. Like, give me more. I don't just care about the speed. I wanna know the power side too, because there's a lot more information available when you break down the wattage just in comparison to speed. So anyway, numbers fascinate me. And so coming back around to the topic here, this is, this is coffee number two for me. So in the first cup of coffee, I put in my, I think this one's MCT. So there's two kinds of these oils that folks on keto talk about, and they're just essentially like fat. <laughs> That's it. They're not flavorful. This is the one that I like. And then there's another one from this Bulletproof coffee line that is called Brain Turbo, something, something about brain. I like that one too. I've tried them both. The only difference, I don't even know. Honestly, I don't know because they're both flavorless. They're both the same exact, you know, this identical. I think one maybe says it's better for something. Or is that one might not have that something? Oh, alfalfa. All right, so back to the coffee. So no food yet is what I'm getting at. 12 ounces, why not? And that's another thing, I cut back on my caffeine. I went from having 36 ounces a day of coffee to 24. So that's good, right? Way better than it used to be. And then sometimes I'd even push it and go like three and a half, four cups. Woo! Believe it or not, you can. Yes, you can. Total sugars are less than one gram. Total carbohydrates, less than one gram. So they're getting like a 0% on your food facts thing. Fat, yes. Sugar and carbs, no. Because your body will turn carbs into sugar. So that's why those things go together. On the no-no side. So this is gonna be a really fancy keto latte. Pumpkin spice latte. So, fun fact, like I said, I started doing this whole journey on, I believe it was August 18th, my girlfriend's birthday. So I'm doing this soul searching, this deep dive into how I feel and how I don't want to feel like that anymore. Because I was working out seven days a week at this time, too. So it was just like, like I said, a vicious, vicious, vicious cycle. And I just could not get off of this roller coaster. And my husband is the freaking best. And he's so helpful and he listens and he always wants to like help me through it, you know? He's not just like, wah, 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 good luck. He is, he's like my teammate. He's in the trenches with me. He was like, first of all, I think you need a day off. Like your body needs to recover and heal. And... Mm -hmm. We're not even done yet. So I, I, I was like, yeah, that's a really good idea. And then I was talking to these guys at the gym. They said the same thing. They're like, oh yeah, I didn't used to take days off either. And now I take two days a week off. So this is heavenly. Just cinnamon on the top. So, so yeah, that was another change going from seven days to five days a week working out and the workouts that I do are like 
solid core, I spin on the Peloton bike, I run, I go to um, Coach Neil's class, a footballer fit. Oh, love that gym. Love that community. And that's like hit, that is just kill yourself. I mean, weights, high in endurance and high, it's just hit, it's awesome. And yoga. I go to a couple yoga studios around here. So I mean, between those things, like I never get bored and that's the point. Like I don't wanna dread a workout. I wanna get excited about it. Like I get to do this, you know what I mean? So there's that. And um, yeah, so I'm on this journey. I'm doing all this stuff. I'm cha making these changes, drinking less coffee, changing the way I think about mealtime. You know, I, I used to just eat whatever the kids didn't eat. And like that was like, oh, that'll be my breakfast the corner of your French toast or whatever. And that is no way to do it. Because, I mean, say if you're a mom like me, you put so much effort into the meals you make for other people, and then when it comes time for yourself, I like stand in the kitchen, kind of like this, <laughs> and just piece it stuff that other people didn't eat. And now, I actually make my meal a meal, like on a plate, like just for me. It's amazing. So it's it's a lot of self-care over here, you know, just redoing things, rethinking things, making it make sense. And now I'm in this pretty good pattern, you know, where meal prep is a thing. And I'm constantly stocking the pantry and the fridge so that I don't fall into a rut of like bad habits. Do you know what I mean? Because the day will come, I mean, I've had a few already, where you're running low on all the stuff that you know works for you and you just want to eat the rest of the mac and cheese. You just do. You want to eat the whole thing, actually. And uh, yeah, just be prepared. Be prepared for it because it's going to happen. And think ahead. What's your version of mac and cheese now? What, whatever that is for you. So I downloaded this app that connects to my scale. It's um, Fit, Fit Track or something. I was watching this UK-based um, YouTuber. I think her name's Sean. Anyway, she's amazing. So Sean was talking about this scale and the app and like the data. As soon as she said data and numbers, I was sold. I didn't even need to hear her say nothing else. So I get one of these scales during quarantine, mind you. Awareness, you know what I mean? Awareness is everything. And I was losing touch with things, so this scale really made me think about things differently. So there's a bit on, on the data bit, because you tell it so much, you know, you tell it your height, boy and girl, uh, what your weight is now, what, what your goal is, your age, yada, yada, yada. So it would tell me my metabolic age, and I'd love to see that number go down. It's amazing. So I used to only be like a year or two health-wise younger, and now I'm three years younger. It's amazing. My insides are three years younger. I don't know about the outside, but that's such a different story. So yeah, I, uh, I got this scale. I like the data that it tells me. And I mean, is it, so I guess, I guess it is, it works for me. It's motivating to me, and if numbers and data motivate you, it just opens up your, you know, you step on the scale, you get one number, not with this. You get more, more information, so it's a total picture. And I like that. And then the final piece of this is your tape measure. So yes, it's great to see all that extra number data from your scale, and your clothes feel different, and you feel fuller, and you feel like you are making changes that should warrant progress on the scale and your clothes and all that. But the measurement of your, you know, the standard measurements of your body, that is critical. I found that to be the most motivating and like real number that I could benchmark change off of. So for me, 38, I from, the middle of August to early October, I'm 10 pounds down. And I've stayed 10 pounds down. Like the first couple of weeks 
when I was just transitioning and trying to figure out what keto was all about, it was hard to know where I was making progress because it's like, oh, is that just water weight, you know? Is that just this? Is that just that? So I feel like this is a long enough span of time to have maintained and stayed put and feel like I'm in some sort of routine. So yeah, that's pretty great, right? 10. I felt that was amazing. But it's about the feeling. Like I, I just keep bringing it back to that because I was going nuts. I couldn't get out of the kitchen. It was just like, I wanted to eat the house down all the time. Like my period's coming every day, like that. So that's what spawned this whole thing. I didn't want to do that anymore. And I didn't want to do crazy stuff that wasn't gonna be sustainable. And that's kind of how I felt about keto in the beginning. I'm like, who can do this for the rest of their life? And I mean, granted, it's only been two and a half months. I am no expert and I'm certainly not one to ask a million questions to, but I mean, I feel like I'm really on the right track. So in summary, I just wanted to go over measurements a little bit more specifically because it occurred to me that uh, this might not be common knowledge. I, I mean, I grew up from a little kid doing dance classes and we would get measured every year for our costume fitting. And then when I went to college and I started dancing there in the company, same thing. Our theater department made all of our costumes. So when they would take measurements, I mean, they took everything. Neck, circumference of your arm, circumference of your wrist, circumference of your calf, your this, your quad. I mean, it was, it was detail oriented to say the least. But it was, um, it was great because, you know, they're tailors and you got to see them work and see where they're measuring and why. And so anyways, I wanted to show you where I take measurements and where I took measurements pre-keto and where I'm at now. It's fascinating stuff. Okay, can you see me all the way? I'm gonna actually go into the dining room. I think there might be more light over there. Oh yes. Right. And I got a mirror here so I can really see. So this, I don't feel like this number changes too, too, too much, but it definitely could. You know, if you carry some weight like in your upper arm or like your back. So you would go just like I'm doing. You're above the boob, if you have boobs. You're above that. So upper, upper chest. And then kind of like try to keep one of your arms down and then move this minimally. So this is for me, this is 40. That number did not change. That number for me was always 40. I got broad shoulders, you know what I'm saying. All right, so then the next one is your waistband of your, not your waistband, your bra band. So this is a number you see all the time if you're online shopping. You're gonna need to know that number. So like right around your bra. And I mean, you wanna get tight. Mine's 32. And then you go around your bust, like the middle, like where your nips would be. <laughs> Boy or girl. And you do that. See, I got like padding in my bra. So I know that number for me is 34. It's telling me 36 right now. And then the waist. All right, so when you're gonna do this, jeans, don't go buy your jeans and where they come to. That's not your waist. Your waist, you have to literally look in the mirror, stand with your feet together, you know, stand up nice and tall, and see your body. Where is that on you? Because my waist is gonna be in a different place than your waist. And if you have a long waist, long torso, short torso, like all that stuff matters. And if you cannot find a significant nip like where you definitely come in, then you're probably a rectangle shape. But just measure your circumference. If it's all the same from here to here, just take that measurement. I am not all the same from here to here. And what's really cool is like, if you're trying to figure out what body type shape you have, if you can look at your numbers on a piece of paper, you can see them so much easier. 
So for me, like this is 40, this is, I think this is 26, but like, see on me, you'd wanna measure right there, right where it goes in the most. But my belly button is right here, so don't measure, <laughs> that's not your waist. Go at your belly button. Yep, 27 and a half. So 40, 27 and a half, and then your biggest part of your butt and thighs. So think, go sideways in your mirror, and like where you're, you're the most poofy and curvy, so like somewhere in here, so get that tape measure right like that, stand with your feet together, and go right around and get that figure. So this, this, and this, in summary, tells you your body shape type. Rectangles, pears, apples, hourglass, you will figure that out by those three numbers. Hourglass is the easiest one to figure because it's like big, small, big. <laughs> because this, I think this on me is like 38. So 40, 27-ish, 38, I think. And like, keep in mind, like, I got curves. I am here for a workout and naturally I am going to have some muscle. 37. Woo! Yeah, I'm usually that. I am, if my waist is whatever, my, my lower half is plus 10. I don't know why. It was always that way. When this was 29, this was 39. Like, it's, it's fine. And then another one that I like to do just for reference for online shopping is from the crotch, like crotch, literally, the tippy top of your seam on your jeans, go all the way down the inner seam to the floor. And for me, that is 30, I can't be right. I'm short legged. 31. So you know how jeans will say inseam 30, 30, 32, 34. That's what they're talking about. So if you don't know about how long your legs are, you could be ordering jeans that are too long and you could have avoided that. <laughs> so I love to wear pumps. This is no new, no new news to anyone who knows me well. And if I know a cut of jeans, I'm always going to be wearing with pumps. I might say, eh, I'll go with that 34. I'll get the extra long because my pumps are gonna bring me up two plus inches. Uh, where's the last one I take? I mean, if you wanna get real crazy, you can just do circumference of anything. Like at the end of your um, t-shirt line, you know, you could do that one. That used to be 11 on me, now it's 10 and a half. And then for me on my quad, I try to just do the center just the center of the quad. Again, leg straight down. Um, like 20 and a half. It used to be like 21 and a half, 22 sometimes. So there you go. You feel like much more validation in the numbers, I feel. At least I do. I'm a numbers person. And I'm 5'7", for the record. And I'm out of the 140s. I mean, that's no, that's, I think the 140s are fabulous. I mean, I feel like I was that weight in high school. Like, crazy. Now, I live in the 130s. On the lower, lower end of that too. I'm excited about it. And I really, don't care to talk about it. Like, I, I mean, it doesn't bother me. Like I just did my whole measurements and here we are talking about the scale, but it's, I think it's, you know, benchmark. It's, it's hard to compare sometimes, you know, like, am I doing as well as I could be or what improvements have I made? Like you can go through old numbers to new numbers, do the math and be like, I lost a total of blah, blah, blah inches and like feel great and accomplished because it's something to write home about. I think it's great. 
So if you're on this journey and you're with me and you're all for your sanity, then cheers to you. Cheers with a little pumpkin spice, you know what I'm saying? Delicious. All right, girls, gang, guys. I'm on my way to the grocery store. I hope you found this interesting. But until next time, have fun in the kitchen, gang. See ya.